There's a new article from CNBC. It's called People Are Spending Hundreds a Month on Dating Apps as Free Versions Turn Borderline Unusable. Hmm, interesting. Um, before we begin, there's a couple of key points that the article lays out. The era of free dating apps may be over. Companies are trying to boost revenue, while single people increasingly feel the apps are the only way to find love. <laughs> some 35% of Americans who have used a dating website or app have paid to do so at some point, according to a recent report by Pew Research Center. The days of venture capital subsidized swiping are over, said Blaine Anderson, a dating coach in Austin, Texas, who said her clients spend hundreds of dollars a month on dating apps jesus okay now the actual article can begin channing muller moved to chicago in may from chattanooga tennessee her main goal in the new city was to find a partner why would you move to another city to just to, okay whatever already a bumble user before long she was subscribed to three more dating apps the league hinge and match muller wanted to get the most out of the platform so she signed up for their paid versions at times, she was spending more than 100 a month on the apps. When you're serious about looking for a relationship, you're going to put your money where your mouth is, said Muller38, a marketing consultant. <laughs> I'm saving that one. Okay, the era of free dating apps may be over. Companies are trying to boost their revenue while single people increasingly feel the apps are the only way to find love. Some 35% of Americans who have used a dating website or app have paid to do so. At some point, not me, according to a recent report by Pew Research Center, the average paying dating app user spends around 19 a month, Morgan Stanley found earlier this year. Some people, however, shell out more, much more. The league's VIP membership costs 999 a week or 2499 a month. The VIP membership allows you to match with prospects in multiple cities, see new singles first, and use a concierge service that says it will help you win at this dating game. Listen, um, I'm going to just spoil something. I think paying for dating websites is stupid just because I, I, I think you shouldn't have to pay just to talk to someone on the internet um, unless maybe they're a celebrity and even that's pushing it. But 99 Nine hundred and ninety nine a week to, to have VIP membership on a dating site. That's damn near half the, the cost of rent out here. Okay. And and the two thousand four uh two thousand five hundred a month is roughly more or or uh, the equivalent of, of paying rent in one of the most expensive cities in the whole country. So it just it, I think that's insane. But in September Tinder rolled out a 499 monthly subscription to some of its most active users and hinge recently introduced a 600 a month membership the days of venture capitalist subsidized swiping are over said blaine anderson a men's dating coach in austin texas who said her clients spend hundreds of dollars a month on dating apps companies want to monetize the services they provide to eager singles the rise of paid options have rendered free tiers borderline unusable for some clients anderson said Still, dating app companies said they have noticed a demand for paid add-ons and are unlikely to go back. There's a group of users who are eager to use our premium features, AJ Balance, Grinder Chief Product Officer said, told CNBC. Officials at Match Group Inc., the parent company of more than 45 dating apps and sites, I didn't even know there were that many, <laughs> including Tinder, Hinge, and The League, declined to comment. I wonder why. Dating apps have seen a slowdown in user growth of late. Yay! Okay. Uh, sorry. I, I, I'm I, telling you, people are getting sick of this, especially men. St uh, stoking investors' concerns that the honeymoon may be over for the U.S. online dating industry. The U.S. online dating industry. That's a really pathetic industry in terms of, like, people's interactions in real life are so bad, so garbage, that they're own they're they're like their last resort to get a partner is to sign up for internet apps where people can just complete ignore them even with much more ease than they would be able to in real life i think there's a general sense of app fatigue said Catherine kudoto an assistant professor at boston university who studies internet behavior in her research kudoto has found that many people 
use up to four dating apps at a time. The platforms can start to blend together. The apps are pulling from the same dating pool. And so users are seeing the same people matching with the same people and not finding anyone new. Kudoto said, this leads to a feeling of frustration, a question of like, what's the point? Dating apps in response are trying to entice users with exclusive memberships and unique perks. Anderson said, premium features can really accelerate and improve the quality of your matches and dates. I, I want to just say this. Um, premium features can really accelerate and improve the quality of the match. No, no, no. Premium features, whether you're paying 100 a month or that 99, 999 a month that was mentioned earlier, no matter how much you pay a month to be on these stupid websites, they can't force someone to date you. So if you see someone but they don't like you back when they keep clicking you off. You could be on the you could be on the same five sites and it wouldn't make a difference. On the dating app Coffee Meets Bagel, users who pay 34.99 a month can send virtual flower bouquets while Tinder lets certain subscribers swipe on people in different cities. Grinder users can see an unlimited number of profiles if they pay 39.99 a month compared with the 99 profiles available to its free users. Wow. Paying to find love is, of course, not new. People have paid for things like personal ads, speed dating experiences, dating and relationship coaches and matchmakers, Kudoto said. Yeah, but the difference between that and this is that, um, generally speaking, I mean, I, there, there just isn't any data on if this stuff works. I, I've, I've yet to see a poll that says, oh, 58% uh, of our... 50 or 60 percent of new relationships are are through people meeting online or dating apps or whatever or through relationship coaches and matchmakers and speed i i haven't seen anything that bears out that any of this flash in the bottle nonsense is actually improving anyone's you know ability to find to find love while there's proven to be a healthy market of dating app subscribers many single people may feel they have no other choice said ali Mugarabi, Senior Equity Analysis at Morningstar Research Services. It's become more of a norm to use apps to find dates in long-term relationships, Ma Karambi said. Anderson, the dating coach based in Austin, said her clients often feel that they have to pay for an app's premium services to actually have a chance of meeting someone. You want to be able to cast a wider net, and you often can't do that with the free version, Anderson said. The unpaid versions are also increasingly loaded with annoying advertisements. Kudoto said, you're swiping on a lot of ads in addition to people. <laughs> she said, <laughs> I thought they were going to say they have those bots on there where it's like some picture somebody took off of some other site. And they're like, oh, yes, I am very attractive female in Florida looking for man. Like, yeah, you're you're definitely real. I, th I thought that was what they were indicating, that you have to pay or else you, you're more likely to get the fake accounts. Um, dating app costs can cut into other expenses. Duh. Carly Blau, founder of Boutique Psych Psychotherapy of New York, said she thinks dating app companies are taking advantage of people. Some of her clients have been on the app for years and remain single, she said. <laughs> She's noticed that many of the features that used that, that used to be free now come at a cost. At what point are we monetizing someone else's unhappiness? Where does it become unethical, Blau said. It, it does when these bastards start losing money. Like, for example, if everybody came together and said, you know what? I believe I have a better chance of meeting someone if I sign up for a dating app. But this is too expensive. I, it, it shouldn't cost me nine uh, 999 a month to be on someone's stupid app. If people boycotted these dumb sites, they would ch they would either lower their prices or they would get rid of it altogether. Like, like they mentioned earlier, you got all those ads on there. They can, they can find a way to get paid. Um, Nikita Sherbanoff, who owns a software company in Phoenix, has spent around 200, 250 a month for the last two years on three dating apps. Hinge, Bumble, and Tinder. It's kind of expensive, Sarbina26 said. I usually compromise on other types of ex expenses like groceries. Imagine, like, being so fixated with meeting someone right finding love that you would actually compromise the expense of groceries which is a utility you need food to survive so that that's nuts to me 
Um, in its most recent earning call, Match Group Inc. executives pointed to the resumption of student loan payments in the fall credit card delinquencies and other economic factors as threats to its bottom line. Given that we have a lot of consumers at Tinder who are on the younger side and who tend to have less discretionary income, we could feel a little bit of that impact. Gary Swidler matches president and chief financial officer on the call. There is some evidence that paid dating apps get results. Coffee Meets Bagel says its paid users get 60% more dates than its non-subscribers. Pew Research has found that people who met their partner on an app are more likely to have paid for the service. But when you're dealing with an area as messy and mysterious as romance and love, money can only go so far. Got that right, uh, Kudos said. Ultimately, I think it's a lot of people, I think a lot of people pay to use dating apps because it gives them a sense of control over a process that often feels full of uncertainty, she said. Often improving your profile may go further than just paying to be seen by more people, Anderson added. You have to have an exceptional profile as a man to even be in the ball game of potentially getting matches. Kudoto agreed. Paying for a dating app isn't going to write you a better biography or opening line, she said. It doesn't ultimately change who you are behind your profile. In September, Mueller decided to take a break from dating apps, she said. Although the membership offered her more and more features and larger access to profiles, the price tags began to feel too high. I'm sorry, do you have Bill Gates' long-lost son on there? <laughs> Mueller said. <laughs> okay, that was a funny article. Um, I guess I could break it down this way. There are things I don't do but I am sympathetic towards. As someone who doesn't see a scenario where I actively pursue trying to get a date ever again, I completely understand where if you're male or female, you want to meet someone and have a relationship and the possibility of, you know, this great, amazing partner. You know, all that makes sense to me, even if it's something that I don't, personally believe in as a feasible thing nowadays with just the way that women are but for the life of me i can't rationalize spending hundreds and 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 in some cases thousands of dollars per month not on food not on rent not on a car not on any utility but on this stupid app on this little thing that's on your computer where they give you more options than the person who's not paying for it. Because as the article points out, you could pay all the money in the world and you're still not guaranteed to get what you want. If you're a guy, you could pay the two for the 2,500 for whichever one it was that, that was that much and still end up seeing a bunch of profiles of women who go, Ugh, you're ugly. Oh, you're not the race. I like, you know, just, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. And the only person who ends up getting screwed over is you. The, the dating site makes its money, right? Taking all that change from you. The women get to keep going around, you know, scrolling and browsing until the end of time. And then you just sit there and week after week, month after month, nothing changes. I've never paid for a dating website um, just because I, I, I think it's insane that you even have to do that to possibly end up with someone. And I, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not in the business of telling people what to do, but I hope that anyone that does do that at least makes sure that they're not spending copious amounts of money on such a process. Like I heard one was 30 something a month. That's okay. Um, you know, at least if you have a job that's, you know, gives it, gives you a full shift, that's fine. It, it's just not my cup of tea, but it, it is something I can understand, you know, the, the rationale behind. I just hope people aren't like Nikita where they, they, they compromise on other types of expenses like groceries. That's insane. Like if you're, if you're so desperate to get with someone that you'll compromise being able to eat, I, I'm you, you have, instead of having my sympathy, you have my pity. Cause that, that's, that's really nuts. Self-preservation is something that, people don't like to talk about that much but like i said chicks on these sites they're fun to look at you know maybe to talk to in a few cases but your number one priority 
whether you're male or female, should always be yourself. You should always be concerned about if you have something, you need somewhere to stay, enough money to do whatever you need to do to get more of it or to you know live in some comfortable manner. Um, you cannot allow a desire for finding love, which is, I, I hate it that they use that term, but because again, it, you're, you're going on a date, you're not getting married, but, and even then a lot of times those aren't even based on love, but just, you can't let that desire override your well-being. And that seems to be what that person did. Um, and they point out in the article, oh, uh, there's a higher chance of finding someone if you go on one of these sites where you pay. Look, I'm just going to say this. And you, you can call me negative. I don't care who in the comment section gets mad at me. I have in some capacity used probably every single website I've ever been on outside of maybe Wikipedia <laughs> to get a romantic partner. Um, whether you're talking about Reddit, Twitter, um, I mean, even YouTube to a smaller extent. And I have a hard time believing that you're not, like, you didn't meet anyone on those sites. Oh, and Instagram as well. I forgot that one. But you, you, you didn't meet anyone on those sites. But if you pay for this dating app, here comes your, your dream woman. Here comes the magic woman. She's going to descend from the sky and, and fall in love with you and live happily ever after. Like, I, I don't buy that. Because as I've said before, this isn't new. You know, if you've been around the block, if you've been on a bunch of sites, you know what it's like to sit there and talk to somebody that sounds like they want to speak to you. And then after a few days, few weeks, they just drop you. And imagine how much worse that would be if you had to pay to even be able to get that interaction. So this article is interesting. Because it seems that people, they're no, they said they know it's less and less people are signing up, which I'm glad for, because I, I think it is a grift on the part of these, uh, like, listen, most, th these dating sites, when they jack up their prices, when they talk about, oh, we'll give you more access to profiles, their number one thing is of making a profit. Um, and they are, they are, they are capitalizing on how difficult it is for a lot of people, especially men to find a partner. So they're using the misery of human beings to their financial benefit. And, you know, they have the right to do it because there's nothing against the law with regard to doing this. But uh, I'm glad that more and more people are saying, you know, this is stupid. I'm wasting my time. Because I, I really, I don't enjoy seeing people destroy themselves trying to get with a woman, whether it's financially or you know, for some other, some legal reason, it's, it's just not something that brings me any type of, uh, satisfaction. So I hope more and more people stop signing up for these sites. I hope more and more people just go outside. Like I, you know, I, I did, I completely understand not wanting to go out and ask someone in, in real life, but I just, I ran out of patience with this internet stuff. It's, it's too many lies and it's very easy. It's easier for people to just completely vanish on you on the computer than in uh, real life. So that's, that's my last piece. I hope you enjoyed the uh, reading of this uh, very insightful article. And it's just another nail in the romance coffin.